Yo guys, it's sorry you already know that today I am going to be bringing you guys a video talking about my thoughts on the Danganronpa 3 anime. Uh, this is a video that I promised that I was going to do uh, when I finished playing the Danganronpa 2 game. And uh, I have been slowly but surely watching the anime on my own time and I finished it and I have some thoughts. So we're going to talk about the things that I like, things that I didn't like, uh, questions that I might still have. Um, which aren't really a lot, but uh, yeah, so... This video is not going to have like a super great structure to it. I, I didn't really sit down and plan out a lot of what I want to say, but there are some things that I want to touch on. Uh, so let's go ahead and just jump right into it. Make sure that you uh, let me know your thoughts on this anime uh, as well. And let me know your thoughts on, on my thoughts and uh, any questions that I might still have or anything that you agree or disagree with down off in the comments. Uh, but let's go ahead and just jump into it because this anime uh, is split into the future arc and the despair arc which you watch by alternating between them which i did um and it is a very interesting way to to watch an anime uh i will say let's start with the future arc um because while they both are complementary of like each other uh i do think that uh i preferred the despair episodes a lot more uh, however, I think the future arc had a pretty strong-ish start. I will say I like the, the game setup. The, the new sort of killing game for the future arc was really cool. Also, this should be pretty obvious, but I am going to be spoiling everything that happens in this anime, so spoiler warning. Uh, if you don't know everything that's, that happens and you don't want to know, this is not the video uh, for you to watch. Wait until after you watch the anime yourself. I thought the killing game that was set up in the future arc was actually a really interesting concept. It wasn't like the same sort of thing as before. I wasn't really expecting a killing game of any sort, um, but having the future foundation, which we get to meet all these future foundation people, uh, which is interesting, and then we get to see how they sort of deal with this game where uh, there's like a killer among them, uh, but they have these like wristbands that restrict certain things that they can do. And it's all very, very interesting. Um, so I like the setup uh, of the game. I think that's really cool. Uh, this has nothing to do with anything, but the opening theme song is also a banger. Uh, I really love the one for, for Future Arc. Um, the Despair Arc songs were, meh, whatever. But uh, it doesn't really matter. That being said, I think I I wasn't a huge fan of like most of the characters that even showed up in the Future Arc. I mean, half of them get killed off pretty quickly anyway, without really getting much development. Um, but like... I don't know, for the most part, I didn't really care about any of them, so, you know, uh, that, that's somewhat a lie, uh, and I actually have, like, a, a document open, because I was like, I don't even remember most of these characters' names outside of the major ones, obviously, um, there's, so, the, the main ones that do, uh, get introduced and are prevalent in both the future and despair side, um, we have Munakata, who, I'm just gonna say straight up, I don't really like, uh, Munakata basically just becomes, like, this... I'm gonna create hope by killing literally everybody in the world type deal, then he's the only one that he, that he exists and therefore he can be hope for... I don't know who he's gonna be hope for if everybody's dead, but, you know, he didn't really think that one through, I guess. Uh, I don't know, Munakata was kind of stupid, I didn't really like uh, him that much. Uh, Sakakura as well, I really don't like the, these sort of like loudmouth characters, and, and he's one that's like, for very much most of the... Of the uh, anime on both the the future and despair sides he was like if he didn't get his way he's like threatening violence he's like you know I'll, I'll punch you i'll do whatever he got in a fight with like hajime it's just like you're getting in a fight with a high schooler because like you don't like something i don't know it's 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 super weird um uh, uh, i yeah i don't know i i did not like sakakura like at all the one lone bright spot of the the new characters that were introduced uh was chisa yukizome uh, obviously she didn't have much of a role in the in the future arc because she didn't last very long um, But her being the the teacher of the I think it's the 77th class. That's the that's the one with uh, you know uh, From the cast of Danganronpa 2. I think it's the 77th class I really hope it is because I'm gonna keep referring to them as that uh, so <laughs> hopefully that is um, Accurate, but she was awesome and uh, she definitely became one of my new favorite characters just because she was like so nice and you know, wholesome and like just really helpful while also being there for like a mission. Um, her and Sakakura were both kind of sent uh, on the mission to sort of see like what's kind of happening with Hope Peak High School because there's some shady things happening. Which I mean, I guess let's go ahead and just transition more to to the despair side, which is more of a uh, a flashback slash lead up as to how the uh, 77 class like got. F fell into despair how Junko sort of started to to take over 
and I do think that a lot of my questions were answered. Uh, however, from the jump, very first off, I had two major things happen that I just was not ready for. Um, a is a minor one, uh, because I noticed that the ultimate imposter did not look like Byakia, and I was like, that's weird. Um, when does the ultimate imposter end up looking like Byakia, uh, and how does that play in? Spoilers, he never does, so I don't exactly know what the point of, of, of him looking like Byakia was. So, uh, very strange for something that didn't actually end up happening at all in the anime. But Chiaki is a real person. I don't know why I never put this together, or really expected it, but I remember in, in the Dengarom 2 game, there was like a list of students' names on the chalkboard as one of the, the clues or whatever, and Chiaki's name was there, and I was like, that's weird, um, because we now know that Chiaki was like just a program and not like a real person. Uh, so when Chiaki like showed up as a real person, I was like, what? How does this make sense? That doesn't make sense at all. And I tell you, it took me until probably like episode 8 or 9, it was like, I forget what episode she unfortunately, you know, dies. Uh, but it took me until about an episode or two before that to be like, oh my gosh, I bet she dies, and that's why she wasn't there as a real person inside the game. Um, which was a twist so obvious that I just didn't see coming until it almost happened. Uh, but I do have to say that I really enjoy the fact that she is a real person. I think that actually helps me raise my opinion of her, because my main thing when talking about her as a character is... Uh, I wanted her to be, like, a real person with, like, real struggles, and therefore it sort of lessened the impact when it turned out she was just, like, a program and didn't really have any of that sort of stuff. But now that she is, I'm just, like, I, I kind of look at Jackie almost the way that I did originally, where I'm just, like, I like a lot of things about her. So I do think that my opinion of her uh, has gone up. Um, another new character that I think is very interesting um, that I haven't spoke about yet is, is Mitrai. Uh, Ryota Mitrai, the ultimate uh, animator, uh, that, I thought he was really interesting. He was a really interesting character. Um, in both sides, I do think his his sort of, like, last second turn to, like, antagonist at the very end uh, was a little strange, but it made sense, and I didn't really have too much of a problem with, uh, with any of that stuff. So, but uh, I, I did like him as a character. Uh, any other character that I didn't mention, um, I don't really care about. <laughs> Um, there were a couple other people that showed up, um, Monica showed up from- Alright, let's actually kind of talk about, like, this- this weird sort of mention of Alter Despair Girls. They- they show Kamaru and- and- and Toko, they have to, like, acknowledge that the game existed, but they don't really do anything with that, and, um, even, like, at the end, I was just like, this whole thing was, like, Makoto, when you're done here, you're supposed to, like, go to Kamaru and whatnot, and, like, for a minute, I thought that was never happening, I was just like- I don't know, it feels like Ultra Spirit Girls didn't really matter, and um, oh boy, speaking of not mattering, um, I'm just gonna jump all over the place, but, uh, Danganronpa 2, um, the ending of, of the Danganronpa 3 anime, I definitely feel lessens the impact of, of the game of Danganronpa 2, um, because I, I, I mentioned it when it happened, I was like, man, if it happens and everybody's just able to come back to life because anime magic um i'm gonna be upset and uh everybody came back to life with the power of anime magic and uh yeah i i don't really like that i think that absolutely lessens the impact of of their actions um and i don't know i just it, it feels like all that stuff happened for like nothing because everybody just gets to be alive and then be okay again also, I really thought that the anime was going to go into more in-depth as to, like, what happened whenever they finished the, the, the game inside of the, inside of the game. They got their memories or whatever, or whatever, put back into their bodies, and we didn't really see the aftermath, uh, between what happens at the end of the Danganronpa 2 game until they just show up right at the end of the Danganronpa 3 anime. There's no sort of, like, was there uh, an adjustment period of like, what do they remember? What don't they remember? Uh, what made them have the decision to to, to be good versus not? Um, there was a lot of sort of unexplained things just in between them. They were just able to show up and with the power of anime magic, uh, magically like talk Mitrai out of like, not uh, distribu distributing like the, the big hope video uh, for everybody. Um, oh, speaking of, yeah, speaking of hope video, uh, let's talk about despair video. Uh, ooh. 
I, I definitely think that my opinion of Junko has gone down a little bit because I, I think what I pictured Junko as being was as somebody who was very manipulative and able to like get her way. And I thought that uh, these people that were the ultimate despairs or the remnants of despair uh, had she was able to manipulate them into joining her cause and doing bad things. Uh, but no, she just brainwashes people. Uh, and she kind of just has this superpower where she can brainwash people by showing them uh, despair. And that just kind of causes them to do whatever she wants. So it's on a logistical level, it makes sense because how would she be able to uh, corrupt like thousands, millions of people, whatever it is, with despair, like individually? How would she be able to go up and like individually uh, manipulate them? But I just really thought that for like the the remnants of despair these group of people that were given a title uh like that it just felt like there should have been more juko putting in some sort of work to actually get them on her side and so now there's all these things of like oh the remnants of despair are awful they did this this and this and this but we now know clearly that when you're under the effects of like the brainwashing you have no control over yourself that takes away any sort of responsibility that any of those characters have to take uh for their actions uh, you could argue that, like, yeah, they still have to live with what they've done, but, like, they don't even remember what they've done, do they? I don't know. Uh, but brainwashing is just kind of, like, an easy cop-out, and it kind of just keeps all of the, the, the 77th classes just like, oh, look, they are all good people, um, which, you know, I guess is fine, but I just wanted them to sort of go through with, uh, letting, letting the, A, letting the people that died in the game actually stay dead, and B, having them sort of... I wanted an explanation as to why they turned to despair and what they were going to do to atone for that and break out of that, uh, which is very weird because it's it's just brainwashing, uh, which now kind of makes me think it's a little weird. I'm just thinking back to, again, that that, that Mekon trial in, uh, in, in Chapter 3 uh, of Danganronpa 2. I'm, you know, she, like, gets her, her memory back, but her memory is just, uh, what, she's brainwashed at that point in time, so therefore her brainwashing takes over because... That's not her own free will. I don't know. It's very strange, and uh, I don't. I don't really like it uh, that much. And speaking of the creators not being able to follow through with any of their decisions, uh, there was the one fake out in earlier in the first couple episodes where Makoto wakes up and Ina is just like lying there, pool of blood, knife in her chest. Uh, but that was fake because, haha, that's funny. You thought we were going to kill a character, but we didn't. Um, that never gets explained. It never really happens again, and it's just like, why did that happen? It was literally just to fake out the audience, and there's no reasonable explanation as to why that happened. Um, it's not a big deal, but I'm like, all right, fine, that's whatever. Uh, but then they go through, and later on, I mean, there's this foreshadowing of somebody's going to die because of something that you've done, Makoto. You know, whatever, whatever. And then Kyoko. Kyoko Kirigiri. I really like her, and... She died, and I was like, no way. I was like, they're going to find some sort of BS way to keep her alive, but she was laying there dead. She, like, got the, the poison for the wristband because she did her forbidden action by letting Makoto stay alive too long, and wow. I was like, no way. I was like, they won't follow through with killing Hina. They'll let Yasuhiro just roam around the, the, the building doing whatever he's up to, but they're going to kill Kyoko? That's crazy. And then by the power of anime magic, she gets to be alive at the end because you can't kill off any of these characters. And I, I really hate that this that, that the creators just literally cannot help themselves but to make every popular character just come back to life because we don't want people to be upset. Even if... But the, it just doesn't make sense for, for the story. It's just like they were able to, to, to revive her. Why don't they revive everybody else that was killed by like the poison? Uh, because there was more than one th that that happened to. But you know, you didn't care about them because they died earlier. Therefore, they don't matter. And I don't know. It's so it's so kind of annoying. Um, other things to 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 touch on. Um, I did not know sort of who the who the mastermind was of the of the of the future arc uh, killing game, and uh, it was completely out of left field when uh, when Kazuo Tengen. Um, I did not see that one coming at all, and I don't, I, he was actually one of the characters that I was like, out of all these, like, random 
Future Foundation characters. I actually like his sort of attitude, his sort of vibe that he gave off. I was like, you know what, I like this guy. And uh, maybe that's part of the trap, because then it's just like, oh, uh, but actually, I was the one who set this into motion. I guess for the for the pure purpose of uh, of getting Meteorai to, to do his thing, um, it's a very convoluted plan, and like I've watched some summaries just to see if anybody could sort of really get it, and it's like, not really. It, it's a very com convoluted plan that doesn't make that much sense. Um, maybe with more time it could be explained, but I don't know. I, I, just, I don't really get it. Uh, that sort of lessened that for me. Uh, is there any other character worth bringing up? Um, I'm kind of scrolling through just to be like, do, do, do any of these other like people matter? Did I like miss anything? Um, not, not really, not really. I think that's most of my complaints. I will say, you know, I I did enjoy sort of. I enjoyed seeing the, the, the 77th class and, and all of the, the characters that I know just sort of interacting with each other in the in the Despair uh, arc. I thought that was really cool, just seeing everybody, um, seeing how Chiaki became such an important part and like the, the uh, student representative, uh, class representative, I thought that was really cool. Uh, and the fact that they ended up using the collective memory of her to program her as like uh, the trader inside the the Dingrub 2 uh, Neo World program. I thought all of that stuff was really really cool. Um, like I said, I've already touched on on uh, Chisa as well. I thought she was really really good, and uh, yeah, I enjoyed a lot of that stuff a lot. I will say um, another question that I don't really understand. Um, I don't understand the timeline of Junko just in general. Because from what I remember from the first game, well, actually, I guess it does kind of get touched upon a little bit. Um, it's it's very weird. It almost feels like Junko was able to be a part of like all the people and like build memories with them. Uh, of what would that be the 78th class, the one with like Makoto and the people from the first game. Um, but it seems like as soon as she shows up, it's just like despair stuff starts happening. All the stuff about Hope Speak, which I guess does make sense. I guess I was always just under the impression that she was taking some time to um, blend in, make relationships, manipulate people to her side, but I guess she didn't really need to. She can just brainwash everybody. So, like, the timeline of, like, when Junko starts doing stuff, which sounds to be, like, immediately, um, it's a little weird and a little, like, I still don't super get it. I need to sort of see it laid out and explained because I'm sure it does make sense, but my brain kind of troubles processing all that. And, uh, yeah, so overall, I, I do think that the anime as a whole was pretty interesting. I think from episode to episode, I was interested in what was happening, especially on the Despair side, and trying to see how this gr this class of students were going to succumb to Despair. Um, watching Shiaki's death was crazy. Uh, seeing the transformation of, of Hajime, and seeing that Hajime and Shiaki had, like, a friendship uh, even beforehand, and then Hajime becoming... Um, Izuru Kamakura, just like that sort of transformation, and then seeing um, Junko trying to uh, persuade like Izuru, and see like that's one thing. It's just like she was like using him uh, as like for her purposes by like going talking. She did the same thing with Mitrai, where she was like manipulating him and uh, trying to use his animation skills to to subliminally put like despair stuff inside of like the um, anime, so that way. Uh, he could help her with making the despair video. It seemed like for a little bit, like she was, she she had some sort of control over Mikan to make her turn, but maybe that was just brainwashing. So it's very weird that she started to show these signs of being able to manipulate people uh, to her side and for her plans, and then for everybody else, they just end up getting brainwashed. So it's very strange. Um, it is very weird, but um, it is what it is. So I think I've brought up. Uh, everything that I care about um, from the anime. Overall thoughts is I thought it was pretty good. I thought it was interesting. I think the conclusion is a little lackluster, but I don't really know what I would have expected or what I would have had done instead. So, those are my thoughts. If I missed anything big that you want to know my thoughts on, feel free to ask me in the comments below. Um, if there's anything else you want to add on to, uh, please let me know. And, uh, yeah, I think... I think I'm going to wrap wrap it up here. At some point in the future, I do plan on doing some sort of 
massive Danganronpa character tier list, uh, so I will probably go in more in depth about each of these characters individually at some point in the future. Um, not that there's much to say about most of them, but you will probably hear a little bit more in depth about some of these characters in the future. But for right now, I think this is going to wrap up my thoughts, so let me know what you thought. Make sure to hit the like button and stay tuned. And subscribe if you are interested in me playing Danganronpa V3, which should be happening very soon. It'll be the last big Danganronpa game for me to play, and then I don't know what I'm going to do with my life because I've been consuming Danganronpa media for like a year and a half now. So, you know, that'll be something. But uh, yeah, hopefully I'll see you all for that. Uh, and until then, peace out.